What is up guys, it's Conrad back with another video and today we are going to be talking about why you should not care about Roko's Basilisk. So for those of you who don't know, I made a video about Roko's Basilisk about a year ago and if you don't know what Roko's Basilisk is, you can go check it out right here depending on how risky you feel like being today. But basically that video got a lot of traction um, in part because I basically posited that according to Roko's Basilisk, if it sees that you watched the video and didn't like, share, or comment on it, then it will harm either you or your descendants in the future. And so because of that, I got a lot of comments. However, I got a lot of criticism as well, and that criticism I am going to address today in this video. When I created the video on Roko's Basilisk, I was hoping no one would take it too seriously, and a lot of you definitely sort of saw the humor in what I was trying to do with that video and that is because Roko's Basilisk is frankly kind of a ridiculous philosophical argument and we're going to talk about why today. So for those of you who maybe saw some of the comments on the Roko's Basilisk video you'll notice that a lot of people were comparing it to Pascal's Wager. So for those of you who don't know what Pascal's Wager is, I will just let Hank Green from Crash Course Philosophy explain it to you because he did a really good job. Pascal's argument for God's existence had very little to do with whether God was actually real. Instead, it had everything to do with whether belief in his existence was practical. This reasoning became known as Pascal's Wager, and it's really a gambler's argument for religious belief. Pascal's thinking went like this. Either God exists or he doesn't, and reason will never give us an answer. So you must choose blindly to believe or not to believe in God. You can't abstain from choosing. If you choose to believe in God and he exists, you get an infinite reward, heaven. If you choose to believe in God and he doesn't exist, you're not really out much. If you choose not to believe in God and he doesn't exist, you also don't gain much. If you choose not to believe in God and he does exist, you get infinite punishment, hell. Therefore, the smart bet is to put your chips on God existing every time. So you can already see immediately there are some similarities between Rocco's Basilisk and Pascal's Wager. Just replace God with the AGI. So Pascal's Wager was actually a pretty convincing argument for some decades until people realized that there are some fundamental flaws with it. And those flaws, luckily, apply to Rocco's Basilisk. So one of the flaws is that Pascal's Wager and, by extension, Rocco's Basilisk deal with a false dichotomy. So in Pascal's Wager, you have this idea that either you believe in God and go to heaven, or you don't believe in God and go to hell. Now, from a theological perspective, that idea is hotly contested, because some say, well, no, God sends everyone to heaven, or, well, no, God would send everyone to hell anyways, it doesn't matter, or God sends you to heaven and hell for different things, rather than if you believe in him or her or it or not. And the same thing is true with Rocco's Basilisk. There is no reason that you should think that the AI would punish your descendants or would benefit your descendants or give priority to your descendants or you just because you helped bring it into fruition. There's no reason that we would really think that an AI acts like that. What we're doing is we're taking anthropocentric values, our human values, and applying it to an AGI, which I don't think is really fair because we don't really know what AGI would look like we don't know if it would have human-based motivations at all, so sort of thinking for the AGI kind of defeats the purpose of what an AGI is. An AGI is something way more intelligent but beyond human comprehension. That's what makes it scary, not the fact that it would have human motivations. So that's basically why, according to Pascal's wager, Rocco's Basilisk is really not something that you need to worry about. Because for all you know, the Basilisk could punish you for helping it bring itself into fruition because it hates itself and benefit those who tried to stop it because it hates its existence. I know that's kind of weird to think about a suicidal AGI, but if you really think about it, that's just as probable as an AGI that punishes the descendants of someone who didn't click like on a video that some random teenager made. The second and I think most glaring problem with Rocco's Basilisk is the idea that not only do we not really know what AGI would look like, but we don't even really know if AGI would happen. I mean, for all we know, we're talking about something that is technically impossible, or maybe it's not impossible, but the amount of computing resources that it would take for us to create it, we would inevitably just kill ourselves all off in some crazy nuclear war, which is another real possibility. 
And so between those two facts, the fact that we don't know how the basilisk would act, we don't know if the basilisk could even happen, and the fact that we know that Rocco's basilisk is just an extension of Pascal's wager with all of the same flaws, you can see that taking Rocco's basilisk uh, past the point of a thought experiment is kind of useless and can actually be psychologically harmful. But yeah guys, I basically just unsaved myself from the basilisk by making this video, but if you have the balls to, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and comment below about how unafraid you are of the basilisk. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Sweet. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about what we did in this video, please leave them down below. Now, if I could have just one more minute of your time, I would like to tell you about a service that I've been using for over a year now called Script. Now, just as a side note, Script did not sponsor me to make this video. I just wanted to tell you about it. Put simply, Scribd is a lot like Audible, except for instead of being $15 a month, it's only nine, and instead of only having two audiobooks per month, you get an unlimited access to a plethora of audiobooks, eBooks, documents, and even sheet music and magazines. So for me, this was obviously a no-brainer, and right now, if you use the link in the description, you get 60 days free of Scribd, and I get one month if you sign up using my link. So that's why Scribd didn't officially sponsor this video. I'm just telling you about it so that I can get some free months and I can continue learning and you can also continue learning with your 60 day free trial. So thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.